please subscribe to this channel if you're not already and click the bell icon to stay up to date with every video we post on this channel. Please also like and share this video as it helps us perform well in the YouTube algorithm. Thank you and enjoy the video. Glory, glory, hallelujah. This is another day. Once again, we are coming together to worship God, to honor Him, and to share in His Word. Yes, we fellowship around His Word because His Word is truth. And we have no other apart from the Word of God that grew us together. Yes, we live in times when nothing else should grow us together apart from the Word of God. Because they have risen many other people who want to say things that are contrary to the scripture. And one thing that God's people have to protect is the integrity of God's word. We need to believe on the word of God. Because God himself have magnified his own word. God will not do anything outside his word. God will not say anything or communicate anything that is contrary to his word. In the book of Psalms... 138 Psalms 138 the Bible reads this way I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods will I sing praises unto thee I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy loving kindness for the truth for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name God has magnified his word above his holy name. Yes, his name is to be feared, to be revered, but God has magnified his, his word above his holy name, such that you cannot say that that's what God says if it is contrary to the scripture. Everything has to align to the word of God, and that is why we must fellowship and we must be grew together with the truthfulness of God's word. We must believe God's word. We must abide by what the word of God says. We must not abide by what someone say, and he says it's in the name of God. No, on contrary, whatever anyone say must align itself with the word of God. For the truth is, God has magnified his word above even his own name such that god himself is bound by his own word he does not say anything contrary to his word he have aligned himself he is fulfilling his word that's why he said to jeremiah that i watches over my word to perform it the word of god will not be void he says every word that have proceeded from his mouth it shall accomplish and it shall prosper in whatsoever things he has said it to do. Let maybe we can read that in Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, verse 8. He says, from verse 8, this is what God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my way says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways my thoughts than your thoughts for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and make it to bring forth and burn and it may that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. God has magnified his word, and we must be bound by his word. 
we must be bound up by his word and not just any word that he said is of God no that which is written that which is written because we cannot believe God outside that which is written Jesus himself said maybe we can read John chapter 7 he spoke to the Jews that believed on him and he speaks to us to everyone who believes in him on that great day of the feast the Bible calls it in John chapter 7 and I'll read from verse 37 he says the Bible says in the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man fast let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow, live, flow rivers of living waters. So we, we must believe Christ, not based on our own thoughts, not based on our own ways, for God's ways are not our ways, God's thoughts are not our thoughts, but we must be bound by his word. And that's why Jesus said, he that believeth on him must believe on him according to what the scripture said so you cannot make christ to be who you want him to be because he cannot change from who he is he is what the scripture defines him to be so we must believe he says he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters and this is what the, what the, that river is but this spake he of the spirit which should which they that believe on him should receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified so he was speaking when we believe on christ according to the scripture then the holy spirit become of course a deposit within our heart and he begins to flow he gives us that life we begin to abide in christ so we must believe on Christ. We must believe on the word of God. We must abide by the word of God. We must be student of God's word. We cannot be ignorant of the word of God. The children of Israel themselves, they missed God, not because they were supposed to, but because they did not submit to the ways of God. In Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, from verse 1, the Bible says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Israel need to be saved. Not only Israel, everyone need to be saved. This prayer goes for everyone. So Paul, he was a Jew, and he was praying for Israel. Because salvation, as Jesus said, was of the Jews. But now it has been opened for everyone. Because they missed it. And this is what the Bible says. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. They were religious. They are called God's people. They live in the God's land. They do the things that have the semblance that they are worshipping God. But Paul was praying for them. That they might be saved because they had missed the core thing and this is what he says for i bear them record that they have a zeal of god but not according to knowledge there are many people today that are everywhere in the world worshiping going to the house of god but when it is outside the perimeter of what the scripture say is not according to the knowledge. The knowledge has to be by the word of God. So the children of Israel, they, he bore them record. <clears throat> Even when Christ came, they were worshipping. They were looking forward for the coming of the Messiah. But because he had a different, they were not abiding by God's word. They were not abiding in the scripture as it is recorded. They had established their own ways. They had established their own word. 
Jesus rebuked them, saying, You have made the word of God to be of no effect among you, for you have magnified your own tradition about the word of God. So they had their own religion. And many a times there are people who are just religious. They, they, they see how this semblance that they worship God, they are serious for God, they talk about God, but everything is outside what the scripture say. So they Paul bears them record. He says, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We need to be able to submit ourselves to the righteousness of God, to the ways of God, to the established ways of God. That's where the psalmist says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We cannot afford to be outside God's word. We cannot afford to be outside the ways of God. We cannot afford. Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and this is what he says to him. He says from verse 15, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, lightly dividing the word of truth. Hmm? But shun faith, profane and faith babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So you see, whenever we don't submit ourselves unto the word of God, we submit ourselves to ungodliness. Verse 17 says, And their word will eat as do the cattle, of whom is Hermenius, and Feritas, Feritas, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrown the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So when you say you know Christ, you have to know him according to the word so that you can abide in his truth, in his righteousness. You can be able to be a partaker of what Christ says, not what man says, not the traditions of men. We must abide in the word of God. We must study we must study to show ourselves approved of God. So they say, and you know what? This is the reality. Is when you read the scriptures, when you understand the reading is right, the spirit of the word of God, the Holy Spirit, you will have now option that to depart from iniquity. You cannot abide in sin because it will not lead you into sin. He will lead you into righteousness. He says, be holy as I am holy. Let everyone who name it, the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Verse 20 says, but in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some of honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purges himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, prepared for every good work. Free also your youthful ass, but for righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strives. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patience, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to acknowledging 
the truth. And they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil for who are taken captive by him at his will. When we ignore God's word, when you ignore God's way, then you are taken captive by the enemy. And we need to study God's word. The children of Israel, they left Israel, they left Egypt, but they could not allow Egypt to leave them. And you read the book of Hebrews, maybe you can go quickly to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3, but the whole chapter, the whole book speaks about it. Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12. The Bible says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. And belief comes when we ignore God's word. When we embrace other things. Jesus came to the Israelites. He was in the synagogue preaching to them. There was once he went to Nazareth, his hometown. And they had heard of the testimony of his miracles in Capernaum. And when he entered the temple, where he had grown up, you would expect that they are waiting for him. And indeed they were waiting for him. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, that they handed unto him the scroll, and he opened the praise that was written of him, where he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set at liberty them that are bound, to give recovery of sight to them that a brand and to declare the year of the Lord's favor. And when he had closed the book of Isaiah, he said, This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And they got angry. He, they got angry. And they started saying, Is it not the carpenter's son? They, they, they did not believe the scripture. They did not embrace that which was written. They did not seem to understand it. They were walking in unbelief. I think in Mark he says, because of the unbelief, he could not even do miracles among them. Though he had done, he had brought then the peace of God, the grace of God, he had come to do something among them. But he could do nothing save laying hands on a few frogs. So many they left sick. They left the way they had come. Though they had an encounter with Christ, but their lives were not changed because of their unbelief. So the Bible says, take heed, brethren, Lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So when we operate outside God's word, then we have an evil heart. Because it is only an evil heart that embraces unbelief. We need to be purged of our evil ways by embracing the truth of God's word. And so when you have unbelief, you begin to depart or you depart from the living God. Verse 13, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any one of you be hardened through deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation. For some when they had did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not them that had sinned, whose carcass fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? 
but to them that believed not. So we see that they could, they could not enter in because of unbelief. Chapter 4. Let us therefore fear. Least a promise of being, being left. Let us therefore fear. Least a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was a gospel preach as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that had it so you see we appropriate god's word by faith so faith of course needs to be fed by god's word because faith is a, the bible say now faith is a substance of what let me be let me hold there and read to get the correct text in now faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen that is hebrews 11. so you see what is a substance the substance has to be god's word faith is a substance of things hoped for what is his substance it is God's word. That's why we, we faith cannot be without God's word. So you can say I have faith, but if it does not, it does not anchor itself to God's word, then it is not faith at all. You may even look faithless, but if your faith is anchored on God's word, then you have faith. That's why the Bible gives us testimony of abraham that he did not grow weak in faith though nothing seemed to be happening in his life for those 25 years there was no child in their house their promise was to the child but they grew stronger day in and day out the bible say in their faith though the natural it may look like they were faithless but from the god's point of view and from abraham's point of view they believed God. They had faith. No wonder they were witnesses of what faith is. So the Bible tells us here that for unto us the gospel, as well as unto the, the for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not be mixed with faith in them that had it do you have faith is the faith that you claim to have based on the promises of the word of god is it anchored because if it is anchored on god's word then it is true faith and it will be manifested it will come to pass because we must mix our faith by God's word. For verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into the less. As he said, as I have sown in my wrath, if they, sh if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day as on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Sin therefore. It remained, it remained that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, then they would not have afterward spoken of another day. Therefore, there remained therefore a rest to God's people. For if that for he that is entered into his rest, he also ceases from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the example of unbelief 
for the word of God, hallelujah, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of hearts. Hallelujah. Let us embrace God's word. Let our life be anchored on the word of God. Let us examine ourselves in our faith, whether we are anchored in the word of God. Our faith in Christ, is it based on the word of God? He that believeth in me, Jesus said, as the scripture has said, how do you believe Christ? Do you believe him based on what the scriptures have said? Or based on your own thoughts? Or the thoughts of the people who surround you? We cannot just believe anything that is contrary to the word of God. We must believe what the word of God said. We must embrace the word of God. That's why we must believe, we must do what the word said. We must embrace. David had this thing in common. He was not the strongest. He was not a, a mature this person that when you see him, you think, ah, oh, of course, he's big and he's able to accomplish. On the contrary, he was just a common person. Remember, even when he went against Goria, Saul himself was discouraging him, saying, you are just but a youth. And the Goria is a man of war from his youth. When you look at the description of Goria, and you look at David, no wonder even the world, the world have embraced that saying. Whenever a situation is so difficult, and you go against it, they say, it is a situation of David and Goria. But David had this confidence in God. He had anchored himself in the word of God. He meditated on God's word. He spoke of God according to the scripture. He believed God. He spoke of him. And this is something David used to say whenever he was faced with difficulties. Maybe your life is in a position of challenge. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Psalms 68 and find the things that encourage David and how he put it. Every time he would walk, this is what he would say every day. Psalm 68 from verse 1. Allow me to read all the way to verse 9. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him free before him. That was a running call of David. Every time he would arise, every time he would face any situation, he would say, you know what? I'm facing this thing in the name of my God. Remember that's what he said to Goria, that you come to me with shield, with spears, with javelin, but I come to you in the name of God of Israel, whom you have defied, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of heaven. So every day we face anything in life. Every day when we arise from our bed, we must say, let God arise. Let God go before us. Let God go before us. We must call on to the name of God. We must be able to commend and to commit everything to God. We must see everything as God leading us. Everything we do in life, we must allow God to arise. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him free before him. And this he borrowed from Moses in, in Numbers chapter 10 whenever the children of Israel were about to move Numbers chapter 10 remember in the wilderness God used to lead the children of Israel by a crowd and by a pillar of fire so God is the one who led them every day and that's the whole thing here where we say, let God 
arise. Let God go before us. We must be led by God at all times. So, Moses would say in Numbers 10 and verse 35, It came to pass, when the ark set forward, that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Let them that hate thee free before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousand of Israel. So whenever the crowd started moving, because God is the one who determined the time he would move. So the moment Moses would see God is about to move, he would sound maybe with a trumpet to the whole of Israel. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them that hate thee free before me. And you know what? Maybe you can imagine the situation. The priest will begin to fold the ark. The, 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 the Levites will be busy bringing down the tabernacle. The children of Israel that lived around the tabernacle, everyone will be putting their, uh, their wares back into their bags and ready to move. Hallelujah. And they would follow God. They would follow God. And, and Moses would shout, let God arise. They did not know where they were being led. All they knew, they were being taken to the promised land. They did not know how long it will take. They trusted God. But whenever God would take them, whenever a day they were moving, Moses would say, let God arise. And so David had, of course, bought that, understood the word of God. He had anchored in his faith. And that is why he says in Psalm 68, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate thee free before you. So the question is, whenever you wake up in the morning, do you desire God to lead you? Are you anchored in the ways of God? Are you anchored in the leading of God? Let us allow ourselves. Let God arise. Every day, let's say, let God arise and let his enemies, everything that is contrary to God, must be scattered. Let everything that stands contrary to the will of God, free before God. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melt before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. So if you are righteous, every day is a day of rejoicing. Every day is a day of glorifying God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice. Remember in Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6, Paul says, rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Is it Philippians? I think it's Philippians 4, 6. Rejoice. And again I say, come on. Rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. Hmm? So the righteous should be glad. They must be rejoicing before God. Verse 4, sing unto God, sing praises to his name. Let us rejoice. How do we rejoice? By singing praises to God. By singing to God. By singing praises to God. By exalting God. Extol him that lighted upon the heavens by his name Jah. Rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless. He is a judge of the widows. He is God in his holy habitation. So, it does not matter the condition. Remember, God is the father to the fatherless. He is a judge to the widows. Remember, the widows are the most oppressive, most, mostly in those generations. They were oppressed. People wanted to take away that which was their own. The fatherless, they were oppressed. They did not have the head of their family. But God says he was a father. So if you find yourself in a position, you must say, let God arise. You must know he is a judge of the oppressed. He is a father of the destitute. He is able to help God. He is God in his holy habitation. 
God setteth the solitary in a family. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. O God, when thou went forth before thy people, when thou did march through the wilderness, the earth shook. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even set air itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Thou, O God, did send plentiful rain, whereby thou did confirm the inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation has dwelt therein. Thou, O God, has prepared thy goodness for the poor. Hallelujah. So we, we, we must praise God. We must rejoice. We must allow God to be our guide, to be our lead. And how do we do it? By God's word. We sing praises. We sing unto God. What are you singing today? What is your song? What is your praise? What are you magnifying? What is your hope? What is your testimony? Don't magnify challenges. Magnify God. Don't magnify difficult. Magnify God. Don't amplify and believe. Amplify belief by believing in God. Amplify your faith. Don't amplify the challenges. Amplify the living God. Look at David once again in First Samuel chapter 17. He find Israel in the camp, led by Saul, intimidated by the Philistine, not so by Goliath. For 40 days, he had intimidated them, asking them to give them a man who could be able to fight them. They were so fearful. They were magnifying fear. But when David went into that camp, he changed the atmosphere. He magnified God in their midst. He gave the testimonies of God. He said, your servant have been looking after the sheep of his father and allow to come and go. He said, they, this guy is uncircumcised. He has no covenant with God. We have covenant with God. He has defied the armies of the living God. He never said he have defied the army of Saul. He magnified God. These were the people of God. They bore the name of God. They had just forgotten God. Don't forget God in your problems. Don't forget God when you face challenges. Don't forget God when you're rejoicing. Don't forget God in your successes. Don't forget God in any single day. Magnify God like Moses, like David. Say, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise even in your success. Let the enemies of God, the pride of life be scattered. In your challenges, let God arise. And let those things free before thee. Sing praises to the living God. Sing songs to God. Sing praises to God. Even our enemies, they know we sing songs to God. Hmm? Maybe let's turn our Bible to Psalms 137. And hear what the psalm is saying. And how God answers in the midst of that psalm. By the rivers of Babylon, when they were taken captive. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept, when we remembered Zion. At least they remembered God. They remembered their God who had kept them in Zion. The unpenetratable Zion. It was not possible to penetrate Zion. Even the kings of all the earth, they had witnessed that it was not possible. But it happened because of their sins. For me to show you it was not possible. Even the enemy knows it is not possible to penetrate it. Maybe let's hold there. We are coming back there. Let's go to Ramentation. 
chapter 4, Lamentation chapter 4, and let's read verse 12. The Bible says, The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem is I. For the sins of her prophet and the iniquity of her priests that have shed the, the blood of the just in the midst of her. You know, the reality is even the enemy, no one would have believed it was possible. That it is not possible to defeat God's people. Because we are the apple of God's heart. So, the Bible said, when they were taken captive, at least they called to remembrance the goodness of God. Are you in difficult? Are you in sin? You can look unto God for forgiveness. You can repent according to the scriptures. You can call unto God and he'll forgive you. So the Bible says, Yea, we wept, and when we remembered Zion, we hung our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. For they that carried us away captive required us, required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us a meal, saying, Sing unto sing us one of the songs of Zion. If only they understood that this would have resorted to their deliverance. Remember Paul and Cyrus in Acts chapter 16 when they were taken captive, put in jail and chained? The Bible says in the midnight they were praying and praising God and suddenly so though the enemy was mocking, had they done it, the earth would have shaken, I believe. Anyway, this is what they say. How long, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? The reality is, we should sing the songs of God anywhere where we find ourselves. We must sing it. But this is what God promises. If you sing, you'll be surprised. Verse 5 says, If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue crave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerus in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. When you sing the songs of God, it doesn't matter where. So let us learn to rejoice. Let us learn to say, let God arise. Let us anchor our faith, not in anything else, but on the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That substance must be God's word. Faith must be anchored. Our faith must be anchored on the promise of God. We must believe the word of God. We must embrace God's word. Do you know God's word? Do you take time to understand God's word? For even our belief must be according to the scripture. Let us not miss. The children of Israel, they miss the Messiah because he had the wrong conviction. They never operated according to the scripture. They never knew who the Christ was. They had created their own Christ, whom they were expecting. So when the true Christ came, who God had ordained, they even crucified him. Let us believe based on the word of God. Let us, our faith, be built on what the scripture say. Let us be convicted by the word of God. Let us be led by the Holy Scriptures. Let us be doers, not hearers, but doers of what the word of God said. Because we are so commanded and we are so 
instructed. Let us believe God's word. Let us allow God to arise and his enemies to be scattered. Let us have the faith and the confidence to face anything when we believe in God. Let us sing songs to God. Let's sing praises to God. Let's magnify God in respect of where we find ourselves. You may be captive because of your sin, but sing your way out. Praise your way out. Magnify God. Agree with the psalmist. And I'm concluded in Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. With singing, you know, ye, know ye the Lord is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For God is good and his mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generation. Let us allow God to arise and to go before us. Let us be followers of him. Let us abide in his path. Let's follow his reading. Let's follow his guidance based on nothing else but the truth that is by the word of God. For God even have magnified his word above his holy name. Let us glorify God. Let's sing to God. Let's anchor our faith on the truth of the word of God. Let us examine our conviction and our faith and our belief by the word of God. Let us be students that study what the scripture say. Let us believe on Christ based on what the scripture has said. Until next time, allow God to arise. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God make his face to shine upon thee and give you peace. God bless. Cheers. I sign off.